I'm Andrew Eikenberry with Qubit. The best way to describe Qubit is really digital meets analog. The impetus for starting Qubit really came from merging the two worlds of computer music, which I was really familiar with, and the world of analog hardware. And so what ended up happening was I designed the original Nebulae, wrote it in C sound, and ported it to a hardware Eurorack module, and people really caught on with it. Over the years, we got hundreds and thousands of user suggestions on ways to improve the existing Nebulae, and we took basically our top 10 to 15 suggestions that we heard the most often, and then we've implemented all those in the, in the new version. The really interesting thing about the Nebulae is that, in quite stark co contrast to most other samplers, is that you have independent pitch and speed controls. So this allows you to adjust your pitch without your time elements changing. We're also supporting alternate firmware on the Nebulae to run custom code on the module. So we're going to be hosting all of these programs on our website from various users. We're going to be generating our own. And it's going to be a very simple process to upload your own files via a USB flash drive. We're really excited to provide tutorials and learning resources for people to learn how to write their own code. So even if they don't have experience with it, our goal is to make it so easy that people can start to get a feel for it and go as deep as they want, or not go very deep at all, but still have meaningful, rewarding results from the process. Scan synthesis is a way to generate wavetables dynamically. And what's really exciting is it provides an extremely organic type of sound in a way that you don't usually find in the, synthes in the synthesizer. At the top, the scan has coarse, coarse and fine frequency knob, just like any other VCO. But that's about the last similarity that you'll see. All of the other controls affect the dampening and the stiffness of the virtual springs that affect the way the sound moves through time. What the Excite button does is it just ignites the string as if it was hit by a physical object, and then you hear this very organic, natural decay happening. The really fascinating thing about scan synthesis is that it's virtually unexplored, and up until this point has not existed on a dedicated hardware platform. Synapse is an 8 input crossfading switch. It's basically our crazy take on a sequential switch, which uh, sends it into another dimension entirely. Along the top, you have 8 inputs, which cascade down into 4 unique channels. Each one of the 4 channels has a crossfader on the input, allowing you to smoothly interpolate between your two signals. At the heart of it is the 4 terminals and the terminal encoder, which lets you cycle each channel through 4 unique outputs. So once you turn the terminal encoder, you're shifting all four channels to their left or right outputs, depending upon which direction you're spinning it. And what's really exciting is the scatter button next to that. As you press the scatter button, they get sent to completely randomized outputs, allowing you to have unique effects chains for each channel and then cycle various signals between them. You can save up to eight unique memory locations and then recall them and smoothly interpolate between them on the fly. I think the reason that people are so interested in modular synth right now is it's the absolute purest form of electronic music generation because we're no longer constricted by someone else's decisions, someone else's interfaces, someone else's aesthetic. We can actually deal with the primary elements of the music. We can deal with the element of time. We can deal with the element of pitch, but we can apply these concepts that are really abstract concepts in a way that generates music, but we don't have to conform to someone else's conception of what that means, we can do it ourselves. 
and to me that's what's really lit this craze that's been happening right now is everyone wants to make electronic music and the most direct path to that is getting in there and controlling the absolute smallest details of, of the ways of generating sound. As for what the future of modular synthesis holds, I think we're going to start to see a lot more digital designs and a lot more exploitation of these things that we've never been able to achieve before. And we're going to see a lot of things that are not typical for modular systems in general and are not have never been seen in the history of the instrument, but we're going to take it to a new place. Yeah.